In C Sharp 2.0, they introduced the concept of generic types. Now, if you've never used generics, then you're going to probably struggle a little bit understanding what's going on at first, but they are very powerful and you're going to use them a lot. So let's just first look at what is a generic. So C Sharp provides you a list of generic types. Uh, typically, you're going to use them with collections. So I've imported the system.collections.generic types here so that we can use one of them to show an example of how generics work. So, you know, it, let's say that we wanted to have a list of names. Uh, we wanted an array of names. So I would do an array of names, and then I would have to define this array size. So let's say I made it 10, All right? So now I can only fit 10 names in this array. If I ended up wanting to add an 11th, I would have to create a new array that has 11 and then copy all of the names out of this array into that one. It's really cumbersome and generics were created to kind of solve this problem in the beginning. So let's look at how we can make this a little bit easier. So we can use a list generic type. Now, when I type list, you'll see there's a couple different things that popped up, but we're gonna work with this one. But when you see these angle brackets, this means that you're dealing with a generic type. So let's uh, add an angle bracket here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in the type that we want this list to be of. So that's what you really gotta think of it like, is you're creating a generic type of some type that you define later on. So in this case, we want a list of names. So we're gonna make it a string and we're gonna just instantiate that. And now we can add to this list. So when I say add mat, I don't have to worry about the size anymore. That's all taken care of for me. But I can still access this as if it were a um, array. So I can use this, uh, the bracket syntax that we're used to. Now, if I run this, we'll see that this works and it's just storing that name into an array. Now, behind the scenes, this list just has an array there. It's just doing all of that mess for us. But let's say that we created something like this list, but then we had, instead it was string list and it did all this for us, but we didn't use generic types. Then if we wanted to have integer lists, we'd have to have another type and another type, right? So generics allow us to create this list one time and use it with any type that we want. Because uh, now I can change this to an integer, let's say. And we get type safety. So I change this to an integer and now you'll see there's an error here and it says that it can't convert a string to an integer because it knows now that this needs to be a, um, an integer instead of a string. So that's really the power of generics is that I can define later on what the type should be and still get type safety and everything that we're used to getting out of uh, our language at design time. So let's go ahead and look at how would we define our own generic. I'll leave this here. I'll take that out. All right, so what I've got up here is a generic that I just created quickly. I don't want to have to type it all out, but this is how you define your own generic. Uh, up here, you'll see we have the angle brackets when we're defining our class. <coughs> uh, and then we have the T here. Now, T is just a name that I made up. This could be you, it could be type, it could be whatever I want this to be. Uh, usually what you'll see is T. So I'm just going to use T because that's pretty standard at this point. Now I'm using T as if it were a type already. You can see I'm declaring this array of T, but T is nothing right now. I haven't defined what this is. This is what's so cool about this. And then I've got a function where I'm passing in an item that is of type T. Now, how does this actually work? So when I create my list and I pass in, what is the type, right? So I say names, Uh, so now what's happening is at this point, we're passing in string, this type as T here. So now T in this particular instance is string. Okay. So now we get that type safety anywhere that we're using T. So if I say names that add 10, this isn't going to work, right? It's not a string. 
But then I say mat, and now it works. And then I have this other method that will go get an item at an index location. And there we go. So let's run this and just show that it's working. And there we go, it pulled out mat at the index location zero. Now, my type doesn't have count and all that on it because I just made it really quick. Um, so I can't tell, it, it doesn't have all the fun functions and features that list does because I made a quick implementation here. But I just wanna show you how the generic types actually work. The key is that you define this type later on. Uh, that's what I've allowed myself to do here. I'm saying I'm going to create this class and it's going to use a type that's going to be defined by the user of the class later. Uh, and it's really powerful because then we can get a lot of code reuse out of this um, where we otherwise would have to create a lot of different classes for all the different types that we wanted to manage, for instance. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that we can use generics and that we will use generics. Um, so I just uh, wanted to give you a good introduction to generics. You're going to see them in a lot of examples. You're going to use them all the time. So just get used to how they work. Um, and then you're going to have eventually create your own generic types uh, as you're building out your programs. So go ahead, take a look, have some fun creating some types, and we'll dig into more specifics around generics later on in the course in other lectures. So have fun.